praise the Lord, saints. We thank God for another day, another opportunity to still be in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against the King? No one can. No one will. Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Who can stand against the king? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. It belongs to him. We thank God for you this morning to know that victory belongs to Jesus. Victory is his. He conquered it on the cross. Amen. It was his from the get-go, amen. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all the old things are gone, and behold, all things are new. Amen, that victory is in you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We are we're glad, here we are, another first Sunday, the last first Sunday uh, in this year. We want to be mindful of the fact that the Lord has brought us this far. Can I get a witness here? Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you this morning. Thank you, God, for all of your benefits toward us. We thank you, Lord, that you enabled us uh, to see another day. And then, Lord, I, I pray and, and I'm grateful and thankful, God, for your mercy and, and, and your grace toward us, God. We, we, we don't deserve it, but we, we got it. We, have, we thank you for it, Master. We ask your blessings upon every church that stands open in your name for every ministry and mission, God, that, that has kingdom building uh, in, in, in interwoven woven through it, God. We, we pray, Father, for every every home and, and every hamlet, God. We, we ask that you would continue to bless us and to keep us in our prayer. Bless this word on today. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Come on, help me just say this, this part. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus, oh yeah. We're going to be looking today in the book of Joel. Joel, amen. We're going to look in chapter 1 today, Joel. Amen, amen when you find it. This is the day that the Lord had made and we ought to be glad. And it's also a, a, a time of, of looking towards... Um, the birth of Christ and, and all that celebration as it pertains to um, uh, Christmas and, and all. Amen. We, we, we're not going to fall out or debate it. Uh, we're going we're gonna to celebrate it. How, how about that? Amen. The birth, the birth of Christ. Amen. Uh, you, I dare you to really look at that. You'll, you'll see preparation um, of, of him going to the cross right there gifts that were given. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 1, um, 
beginning at verse number one, the word of, of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Had this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers, tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm had left had the locust eaten, and that which the locust had left had the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm had left, that the calipita eaten. Awaken, ye drunkards, and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he that had the cheap teeth of a great lion. He had laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He had made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. His Lord, a blessing to the reading of his, his word. Today, we want to be mindful and to think on, on the devastation of what's eating at you. That's, that's my question today. Um, what's eating at you? Um, when you look and can recall in our history back in uh, 2019, People of, of Joel, they had a lack of, of awareness of the times that they were living in. And I think that we would do well um, uh, to be mindful of the day in which we are, and the days in which we are living in. You perhaps can recall right before um, the pandemic, 2019 in Maryland, um, there was a, a young man who cut in line I think his name was Davis, yeah. Kevin Davis broke in line at the Popeye's store. They had announced a new chicken sandwich. You you remember that. You you probably was on a line um, yourself somewhere. Amen. It was a popular uh, item that had returned to the menu, and this boy broke in line, and his life was taken by a gentleman, um, McLean was his, uh, his last name, amen. He, he served and, and he was convicted of second degree murder in April, 2021, and sentenced to 22 years in prison in November, 2021. We, we, we have senseless acts. Uh, it should not have happened that way. And yet we we live in such a day, <coughs> in such a time, when all of our surroundings are eating at us. We are uh, seem seem like every day we get up, we wake up, uh, striving to, um, uh, to 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 fill a void in our lives. Uh, many just want more and, and more and more and more. Um, I need to ask you, what's eating at you? Um, today. Police asked anybody in that neighborhood um, um, uh, during that stabbing, uh, if they knew what, what had happened, please, please let them know. And, and I'm asking that same question if, uh, in your neighborhood. When you look around, if you, uh, if, you, if you can just let me know, if you happen to see and to know uh, what, what's causing us, what's eating at us, that's bringing us to a point uh, where where we we are in in the kind of uh, pandemic that we are in, Amen. It's not a virus. It's a, it's 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 a reality uh, that we live in a day and time where many just don't care anymore. It used to be a time when we cared. 
uh, for one another. We cared about uh, our our neighborhoods and our our surroundings. But could it be that that we are afraid uh, to tell it like it is? Could it just be that we, you know, we we want to blame somebody else for all of our mishap? We want to blame the church for not being uh, as vis as uh, vibrant and and uh, uh, visible in our communities. And then we. Uh, I, I don't know. Our, our school system seems to have gone haywire. Uh, children are, are, are being partners with teachers, and teachers are um, molesting our children and, 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 and dating our, our children. It's, it's, it's a crying shame. Uh, can I get a witness here? It seems like uh, there are senseless killings every day somewhere, amen, in America. There are murders that are, are, are happening, not because of of chicken sandwiches, but because we have no respect for our fellow man or people in general. Oh yes, people people were asleep spiritually, intoxicated with alcohol. Chapter one, verse five, Joel says that the command was given to be ashamed and that's a crying shame that we ought to be ashamed of our environment, of our uh, right now. Pass it on to your children. Listen to what it's saying. And, and let them pass it on to their children. Somebody need to spread the news and keep it going rapidly throughout the generations. Apparently, uh, there were those who were filled with pride and filled with, with arrogance and failed to understand that God knows and God is concerned with the conditions of our hearts. Oh yes, what's eating at you today? I, I want to know God. God ought to be uh, the joy and the strength of our lives. I was just watching just on yesterday, the uh, 75th birthday of, of um, uh, Richard Smallwood. And it, it just seems when, when you look at, look at some of that, where we have come from, uh, you see that a lot of that uh, uh, really does not amount to very much when we're satisfied with old songs and, um, and, and small offerings. Can I get a witness here uh, to say that we appreciate what God has done for us? And, 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 and don't get me wrong. I think every now and then you ought to reach over and pat yourself on the back. Amen. And, and, and not feel uh, so proud to the fact that you forget that all of your help and blessings do come from the Lord. But here in this first chapter and second chapter, third chapter, this book of, of, of Joel, you'll find out that, and I hope that you, you go and read it and, and take heed to it, uh, to see that the things that were happening then are things that are happening now. Yes, oh yes, in chapter 2, verse 12, we find this phrase, all uh, your heart. Yes, also in chapter 3, verse 14, we find... Uh, this reference in, in those in the valley of decisions. Yes, there are many who are so wishy-washy. You, you, don't, you don't even know. You don't know what you want to do. Amen. You don't know if you want to eat brunch or breakfast. Come on, help me, somebody. You don't know, what, you don't know if you are satisfied with, with, with your job until you've lost it, until you've gotten to the point where you, you, know, you, you blew up at your supervisor. Help me, y'all. Huh? And then afterwards, you wish you had not. You wish you had just, just, just swallowed it and went all thought about it and said, you know, thank you, Lord, that I didn't blow up. Thank you that I didn't uh, pull out my pistol or my knife or, you know, how uh, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. You know, we, we talk about how much we love God, but yet well, we want to be the ones who, who cut off Mal Chuss ear. Huh? We want to be the ones that uh, just say, I ain't going to let nothing uh, separate me from the love of God, not her or him. Come on, huh? Uh, and, and, and Jesus, the Lord, and his teachings uh, are not directed to us in that manner. Uh, somebody looking at me right now. How about that? Uh, you thought about it, but, 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 but you went on and, and you did it anyway. Now you don't know what you're going to do. Can I get a witness? You should have made up your mind. Uh, or better still, you, you should have made a good decision. You should have made a better choice. Amen. And, 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 and you should have been balanced uh, uh, in, in your doings. I, I've been told by uh, Sister Ellaby, my job is to come home at the end of the day. Amen. I, and when you think about it, that's really all of our job. 
make it make it your priority uh, to leave home and with, with your mind uh, uh, balanced and and come home thanking God that you made it back home safely. Can I get a witness here? You and I must must have a balanced life. Yes, don't let life throw you off balance. You know, um, you you can fall either way. You do know that, right? You. Um, I've heard some people say, I'm going to lay down my religion. No, you can't lay it down. You you never had it if you can lay it down. Can I get a witness here? But uh, the point being, uh, you can fall uh, either way. It, it, it could have been you on the ground. Amen. Or it could have been you who knocked somebody on the ground. Come on. You just, nah, nah, you're with me. I, I see. I see. You know, and, and, and getting on the phone. Stay off that telephone uh, when, when, when you're on the you know, on the highway, when you're behind the steering wheel. I was listening to the news. Uh, there's a man who killed two ladies, uh, and he's driving an ambulance, dropped the cell phone, went to pick it up, and, and, and kill those people. Amen. It's just things that are so important to us are, are not important at all. You, you ain't going to miss nothing. Amen. You, they'll call you back. Can I get a witness here? We we get so involved. There are people who playing their games. I don't know if you see this. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know who I'm, who I'm talking to now, but they're playing games while, they, while they're driving down the street on that phone. A amen. They, leave it alone. Put it down or pull over on the side of the road. If it's that important, handle your business and then get on about where it is that you're trying to go. And this tells me, and that and it all of this let us know um, that many uh, were on the edge of their commitment to God in Joel's day, in this first chapter. You, you know, they, they, they were half-hearted and, and not totally sold out for the Lord. Chicken and pig commitment is what they had. They were, they were, they were stuck on a sandwich. Can I get a witness here? They were stuck on what could fill their bellies. Amen. I've, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. I don't want to have to uh, put him on the back burner or let him be last, the last thing I, I do or check with throughout my sojourn. Uh, another key that we find in Joel is in chapter 2 and verse 13 in the phrase, rent your heart and not your garment. Hmm? Uh, the renting of garments or the tearing of garments was an outward sign of uh, repentance and, and deep sorrow among the Jewish people of that day. Outwardly, things looked good, but, but God sees inwardly, mm, and he judges accordingly. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for coming to see about me. Amen. No doubt people were making a show of religion. Mm-hmm. Talking about it, but not being about it. Yeah, talk about how they love folk, but then uh, your phone don't ring when they don't see you. You know, it's it's it's, it's a shame, eh, amen. Doing all of the right religious uh, rituals, at that yet inwardly their hearts were far, far from God. One final key is found uh, throughout the book. Write these down, chapter 1, verse 9. Chapter 1, verse 13, chapter 1, verse 16, and uh, chapter 2, verse 17, all make reference to either the priesthood or the temple. The implication here is that the priests, the ministers of the law, were unconcerned about the people under them. They were in that thing for themselves. Can I get a witness? Amen. As, as long as they were receiving their portions, as long as they had a diamond in the back, sun rooftop, digging the scene with a gangster lean, as long as they uh, could, the, the jet was full of gas, as they, they had no concerns of making intercession and carrying the needs of the people before God. This was a nation, I tell you, that while outwardly looked religious, inwardly uh, they were away from God. They were lukewarm and indifferent. Idolatry really should have been what it said on the front of their t-shirts instead of I am essential. It should have said 
I'm an idol worshiper. I'm stuck on stupid. Amen. Be, uh, before anyone falls away from God, outwardly. Let me just tell you, you already fallen away from God inwardly. Oh, yes. The prophecy of Joel points out certain truths and, and we need to perhaps look at some of them today. There is a sober uh, disapproval of sameness. You better hear me today. We do not all agree. Amen. There's some who, who think more about a church build than they do about the building of the church. You go somewhere and sit down and think about that for a minute. Amen. We, 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 we ought to be a, a people who have lifted him up. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Doesn't make sense. You have a big old pretty house, amen, and you never have any, any guests. Can I get a witness? It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make very much, very much sense to have all of the new appliances in your kitchen. Amen. You can talk and they'll turn on. How about all that? Amen. Dim the light, everything, all of that. And, and you ain't cooking for nobody but yourself. Huh? Can I get a witness here? Some of that stuff we don't need, we just won't. And, and, and you can have whatever you like. Do, do your thing. You know, I'm not saying that if anybody's guilty of having stuff, you go back through the Bible. Abraham, rich man, go on, talk about it a lot, cause he he had it going on. Amen. And and and, and if anybody's guilty of, of being a possessor, it have to be uh, the Lord. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the food is thereof. They that dwell, everything belongs to him. Amen. If any man be in Christ, guess what? You are joint heirs. With Christ Jesus, everything belongs to you. You just got to seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. The prophecy of Joel says that uh, we don't all agree. We don't all agree with that. Amen. We don't all agree that we have power to do what the law says we can do. I told two or three folks that I know. I said, "Look, let's let's pick a day where we can go to the graveyard." And, and raise one from the dead. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Amen. We, 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 we serve an almighty, all powerful God that can do anything but fail. Can I get a witness here? But we tend to talk that talk, but we don't walk the walk. You know, if, if you've seen a miracle here lately, call me and tell me about it. Amen. We, we are not all on or with one accord. Let me just ask a few questions and I, I'll leave you alone. Are you as excited about God now as you were when you first met him? Are you as, as that excited about him now? Huh? Are you concerned about spiritual things now as you were when you first got saved? Hmm. Or do you love the Lord as much now as you did when you first got saved. I tell you, there's a song writer that penned this song. He says, every day with Jesus gets sweeter than the day before. Another songwriter says, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Isn't that the way uh, that it ought to be every day? Huh? We, we find that the Lord is, is better to us than we could ever imagine. That God's promises are real and uh, trustworthy. And, and as we find these things out, it ought to excite us all uh, the more for the Lord. I believe that God wants us uh, uh, as, to be as excited as possible, especially as, as a Christian, amen. We, we have eternal life, I, another songwriter, it said, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Now, uh, have you ever noticed how Satan's tactics change over time and, and, and growth in the life of a Christian? He just can't he keep coming back with the rope of dope. After a while, rope of dope ain't going to work. You're going you're gonna to waste up your time in, in that round just standing there hiding. Can I get a witness? And, and, and somebody pounding you from, you know, from time to time. But when a person first finds and first gets saved, 
uh, say to know that they are not long removed from the pleasures uh, of the flesh. So he brings it right back to you. Uh, uh, after a while, after a while, I can be uh, in the same day. Can I get a witness here? You, you know, I, we laugh about it, but those who go through a twelve-step program, they go through it, and um, uh, they, they they are satisfied that they have been steadfast. And, and when it comes time to celebrate, there's nobody to celebrate with but those that that, that they came from. Amen. So they go right back. Uh, to that gin and juice. Can I get a witness here? They go right back to Tangeray and, and find themselves entangled again uh, with the very thing that, that, that locked them down from the get-go. Oh, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying that, that they won't still uh, 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 generate a possibility of overcoming. Surely you can and surely you will. But many times our, our help that we seek from the Lord uh, is right around us and not being used. There's somebody who, instead of uh, giving you a word of encouragement, to say, brother, sister, don't do it today. Uh, think about it. And, and if you can't get past it, do it tomorrow. But today, hold on because help is here. Help is not on the way. Help is here. And we need to be an encouragement one for the other, especially when we can see what is happening to them and they can't see for themselves. Oh yes, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that man is not an island and no man stands alone. I'm glad that I need you and you need me. I'm glad to know that God put us here so that we might uh, uh, tell our children and they tell their children, they tell their children. And, and before long, we all uh, know the story. Can I get a witness here? And can help one another. You heard Jesus when he said, go out two by two. Amen. Not not just for, for company's sake, but to encourage one another. Amen. We ought to talk about the Lord more than talking about uh, St. Nick's, uh, or uh, what's his other name, um, um, Santa Claus and uh, Chris Kringle. You know, it's they all good in, in what they do, but don't get so involved in that that you forget who you are and what you do. Can I get a witness here? What's eating at you? Why is it such a bother uh, in December? What's going on under a Christmas tree when you don't think about it in January? You don't think, matter of fact, you don't think about it on the 26th of December. You're so caught up in trying to make a point. And the point is that there's, that this old world is still not our home. And yet we're trying our best uh, to, to, to dig in and to be as comfortable here as we can. The Lord knows what you need. Can I get a witness here? Take a look out in the field. Look at the flowers. Look at them. Look at them flowers. They, they ain't bothered. Look at the birds. The birds that are out right now. I was watching some squirrels out the back window here this morning. And they're not worried. They're gathering the, 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 the nuts that they can get and the food that they can, can find so that they can preserve. They ain't falling out. They ain't worried. The Lord provides. The Lord takes care uh, of them. Can I get a witness here? And we need to have that kind of appreciation and acceleration to let somebody know that God loves them so much and God cares for them so much. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, it says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Oh yes, I don't believe Paul was so much talking about the church attendance. No, no, more people go to church today than any other time. There are more mega churches around uh, that than you can shake a stick at. Amen. But I believe that he was talking about those who have fallen away from the true sincere faith in God, who lost their zeal for God and, and just go through the motions of serving God. It's, it's so sad. I tell you, uh, I think we ought to get better. There ought to be a, a, a better, can I get a witness here? That you just ought to be a, a better Christian. And then when you go back and look at God's word, you see those who were at their best who still 
um, could not make it. Amen. They still failed along the way. That, and that's encouraging as well, for the word tells us all have sinned. All have come short of God's glory. There's none righteous. No, not one. Uh, you know, our, our righteousness is like a filter rag at his feet. Uh, we know all of that. We got that. But do your best. Do your best at doing what God wants us to do. Lift him up. Lift him up. Come here, Solomon, and tell the story. Solomon, what, what do you want? I just want to know um, how to lead your people, God. I just need some I just need some wisdom here to know how to deal with them. Is that all you want? Is some wisdom? You you got it. I'm going to give you some wisdom. You're going to be wise. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you more than wisdom. I'm going to make you rich. I'm going to make you No, there'll never be another man as rich as you are because I'm going to give you everything. Amen. And Solomon had it all. Can I get a witness? Only to get to the end of this chapter to find Solomon to say, vanity is a vanity. It's all vanity. It's emptiness. There ain't nothing to it. All we really need to do is concentrate on serving the Lord, raising him up, lift him up on high. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Having a form of godliness and, de and denying the power thereof is what most people are doing today. I'm not judging. I'm just calling it as it is. Amen. I, I once was told to be a fruit inspector. Yeah, look at the tree. Just just take a look at the tree and see what kind of fruit are hanging on. It would be a good way to determine what's going on in this generation. Oh, yes. This is, this is what is happening in Judah. This is what is happening in Israel. This is what is happening in Gaza and, and, and Hayden. This is what's going on around the world. This is what's happening in, in Oakland and in, in Atlanta, in Louisiana, in Texas. Uh, can I get with it? In Kentucky, in Denver. It's everywhere. It's all over the land. There are so many people who are indifferent concerning their relationship with God. Unconcerned, seemingly. One thing that people fail to realize is that the danger that comes from this type of spiritual atmosphere doesn't take long for a person who's just going through the motion to fall asleep spiritually. A person who is asleep is not aware of what's going on around them and they're not really concerned about uh, what is going on around them. It could be close to death and not even be aware of it. Oh yes, the house could be on fire and they, they won't even know it until it's too late. Indifference or being unconcerned or, or the lack uh, of interest leads to spiritual sleep. You'll be more concerned about the flag uh, girls running up and down the aisles. You'll be more concerned about the dance team and the Praise team. Can I get a witness here? I don't need no team to help me to praise. Can I get a witness here? The Lord has been so good to me. Just get back. You, look, you ain't even got to hold my mule because my mule know how to dance too. Can I get a witness here? We're going to praise the Lord uh, in unison and lift him up. I believe that uh, one of the greatest sins in the church today is not adultery, even though it's in there. It's not hatred and prejudice, even though uh, it's in there. It's, it's not gossip, uh, even though gossip is in there. But I believe that uh, one of the greatest problems in the church today is the sin of indifference. Oh, yeah, we, we want to fight over who's going to sing a song. We, we want to we, we don't, we don't hurry up and get through with the message so we can sing a uh, 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 blessed assurance or this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. And we, we missed the whole concept of him, his salvation, his saving us and salvation uh, being uh, worked on from day to day. Amen. Every day uh, there's a soul that slips off into eternity and we don't seem to care much about that. We're more concerned about the way we worship instead of who it is that we worship. Oh, yes, Satan comes into our homes, into our families, and guess what he does? He steals from us, and, and we seemingly don't care. Amen. I've, I've never seen so many different, we, we got different kinds of genders and all kinds of 
It's just so jacked up and messed up until we until we we become unconcerned. We say, "Oh, that's okay that they can do that, and we can do that, and this or the other," and we forget the foundations of the of the law. We forget that God has a standard. We forget that we, that you must first believe that He is. You got to come to Him, and you got to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Oh, this is a day of indifference, I tell you. You remember. Uh, God told um, the Laodicean church that they needed to repent. Oh, yeah, they had become lukewarm concerning their relationship to God. Revelation 3 and 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Israel had gotten and grown lukewarm. They were indifference to the things of God and their God judges them by sending what? A swarm of locusts against them. Joel 1, 3 through 6. You read it. I tell you here in chapter 2, God tells them that the day of the Lord is coming. For those who will not seek after the Lord, judgment is coming. While certainly God is a God of love. He is also a God of judgment. And he will not tolerate uh, indifference. He will not uh, uh, have it uh, any other way. He will judge us and chasten us. Yes, yeah, or punish us or discipline us. Yes, God can uh, not tolerate indifference uh, among his people. We are often uh, guilty of thinking that God will not judge his church, but listen to what he says, First uh, Peter 4 and 17, for uh, the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And it's, it is the first uh, uh, beginning uh, at us, uh, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel uh, of God? Uh, well, uh, it's interesting to note that in chapter 1 and 2, uh, an unusual pattern develops. And there is uh, an altering pattern of God, uh, either describing uh, what is what he's doing uh, or going to do. And then a commandment is given. In chapter 2, in verse 1 through 11, God describes the coming of the day of the Lord. And then in verse 12, he, he gives a command. He says, turn ye even to me with all of your heart. Now, uh, ain't that good news uh, to know that we can turn to, to the Lord? Uh, yes, uh, even in a desperate day. Yes, it means uh, come back to me. Uh, you once started out uh, on the street and the narrow, but now uh, your soul turn around uh, and so beat up. Uh, God is telling his people uh, that if you want to get out of uh, from under judgment, uh, you must come back to me. Today, our society is under the judgment of God. Abortion is widely practiced in our society, even to the extent that it is also within the church. Pornography, you know what I'm talking about, uh, has uh, addicted Christian men and women on and through the internet. Uh, yes, uh, some are saying that up to 40% of the evangelism, uh, yeah, men are, are viewing porn uh, on the internet. Mm, what a bad, what a sad day, yet as bad as all of that is, uh, I believe the worst thing that grips our church today is the lack of love for the loss. Uh, it seems that we see them uh, and we smell them uh, every day. Uh, yeah, the, the funky smell of that weed uh, that's in the street. Uh, you ain't even got to be in the, in the same room just passing by. It's all in your clothes now, but the lack of concern 
for the laws. Uh, people will fight over the colors uh, of a wall uh, on the church walls uh, and the color of the carpet. Uh, you can't get excited about multitudes dying every day and spending eternity without God. Uh, people uh, come to church uh, to receive their blessings uh, and to get from God. Uh, and they have uh, the audacity to complain if they are asking uh, uh, to serve in a ministry. They look at you like you crazy. Everybody wants their blessings, uh, yet no, many are unconcerned about the things uh, uh, that pertain to the Lord. Uh, God uh, gives significant commandments to his people. Uh, God is concerned uh, about the lack uh, of unconcern. Yes, isn't it strange that we're only concerned uh, about our little bitty groups. Uh, mm -hmm. First uh, is the command uh, to blow the trumpet uh, and to sound the alarm. Uh, you better let somebody know uh, what's going on uh, in our society and what's really eating at you. Uh, what I believe the prophet is saying, and I'll be through in a minute. Uh, yeah, be concerned about the lack uh, of unconcern. Uh, isn't it amazing? Uh, you almost got to ask folk, uh, have they been born again? Uh, yeah, because their actions uh, don't line up uh, with their words. Uh, to blow the trumpet uh, was to declare to the people that something important uh, was happening. Uh, the Lord said the reason uh, you ought to blow the horn is because the day of the Lord is coming. God will judge unconcerned lifestyles. Yeah, we have to have, have, to have the real realization that the real church, yes, needs to let people know that God still judges indifference. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to stop here. Yeah, there is a commandment to turn back to to the Lord. In verse 12, with all of your heart, the Lord said to give me all of your heart. How many times are we guilty of just halfway doing what God says to do? The Lord must be the Lord of all, or he is not Lord at all. Oh yes, we need to realize that it's not enough just to show up. No, no, we have to give God all of our heart. God commands to stop showing out, in essence, and rent your heart. Don't be so concerned about what people see on the outside. Mm. Get it right on the inside. Oh yeah, if we would but turn to him, God is slow to anger. Can I get a witness? If we would just turn to him, God assures us, as he assured them, that he will give them an abundance. Verse 24 says, the floor will be full of wheat, meaning there'll be blessed, a blessed harvest. Hallelujah, God uh, desires for his church to be involved in the harvest. But because we have become indifferent, intoxicated with the world's cares, we no longer have the abundance of a good harvest. But when we turn back to him, hallelujah, when we, when we, when we follow the commandments that have been given by him, he promises an abundant harvest. Oh, yes, he, he mentions uh, the fats, amen, the bask, being filled with wine and oil. Hallelujah. Wine and, uh, is used throughout the Old Testament as a symbol of joy. Hallelujah. And I believe that the Lord is saying if we return completely unto him. He will restore the fullness of joy. Joy to the world. Yes, restoration, that which has been lost. Satan may steal from us 
when we are intoxicated and not aware, but when we turn back to God, he will restore all that has been taken and stolen away. Then finally, my brothers and sisters, God invites us to see him nearness in us and close to us. He says that you will know. Aren't you glad? God promises in verse 27 that he will be near. He will be in the midst of his people. His people will experience his closeness. God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. God will be near for his spirit will be upon all the people. When we return to him, when we get hungry for the God, when we says that he will pour out his spirit and we can experience the nearness of God. Walk with the Lord. Talk with the Lord. Tell him that you are his own and the joy we share. We tarry there. None other has ever known. God bless you today. May he keep you is my prayer. I hope and pray that this, this holiday week or month, this, this festive month, brings a harvest into your community, into your home. Praise God today.